Y'all, this video has 20 DIYs that are Christmas themed, and most of them are tear tray, but there are a couple others that are a little bit larger, but they're all customizable. They're all easy to do, and I can't wait to share them with you, so let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. If we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. This DIY is so stinking easy. I'm using leftover fence pieces of wood, scrap wood, and I know y'all are thinking, how much, how much does she have? I still have a lot left, but I'm painting one side of it with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson, just giving it a good coat, and then I'm flipping it over, and I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color antique green. I think that's the color. Yep, pretty sure it's antique green. <laughs> anyway, I give that a good, good coat as well. And then I used my Cricut and I cut out two words. One side is going to say naughty and one side is going to say nice. The green side is going to say nice. And I just apply it like that with my paper transfer tape so it doesn't lift up any of the paint or anything. And I apply the word naughty to the other side. Like I said, this one is simple and easy. And if you don't have a Cricut, hand lettering it, using stickers will all work awesome as well. This is how it turned out on one side. I didn't have like a, I don't know what I did with my photo <laughs> of my project. But anyway, this is how one side turned out. And this is how the other side turned out. And you can choose which one you display on your tier tray. Last project. This was an inspo piece that I had seen. I, I can't even remember where I saw it. But I took this little, I think it's a four by six mat that I got from the Dollar Tree. And it's a thin one. It's not the, it's a stretched canvas, but it's like a thin board. Anyway, I painted it with that charcoal paint and I cut out with my Cricut, all is calm, all is bright. And now comes the fun part. I am going to be painting, and I'm not the greatest painter you guys, so be kind in the comments, but I'm gonna be painting some snow, if you will, at the bottom. I'm also going to be adding some trees on each side. Some evergreens maybe, I don't know. I don't know what kind of trees they are. The, this kind of tree that I'm painting, that's what kind. Trying to add a little bit of dimension using a couple colors of green. I'm also adding some like snowflakes. I guess they could be stars, but like snowflakes and then adding a little bit of snow to the trees. And this is how it turned out. Another piece of scrap wood that I gave two coats of the Rust-Oleum chalked paint, chalked ultra matte paint in the color linen white. You'd think by now I'd be able to say it correctly. I got this sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm giving it two coats as well. I bought these paper mache letters from Hobby Lobby and I am giving them a coat of the linen white as well. The letter O is also from Hobby Lobby it, and it was already white but I wanted to make sure it matched the same color so I'm painting it linen white as well. And if you haven't guessed I'm spelling out joy so I had to paint the J as well. Same concept as before. I am applying this Cricut decal. It says to the world. I'm applying it to this little scrap piece of wood that I painted white. I'm going to go back and paint a thin coat of the white again over the words after I remove the transfer tape in the hopes that it will not bleed. We shall see. Please cross your fingers for the next part. Now it's time to use the Waverly Wax in the color antique on both the base and that little scrap piece of wood that has the words to the world on it. The moment of truth, y'all. I start peeling back using that tool that I got from the Dollar Tree and wow, it just did not work out. From this view, it doesn't look too bad, but trust me, it, it looked kind of rough. I'm gonna add embellishments now and I'm just gonna use this Canadian pine stem again. Got it from Dollar Tree last year and hot glue it to the front. Now here's where it gets wonky. The, the, the to the world sign just does not look good y'all. So I thought maybe I'll distress it a little bit. Y'all, it basically just, I was erasing it. I was like, oh my goodness. I also distressed the letters, the edges of the letters J, O, and Y with the distressing ink. And then I had some white vinyl y'all. I just got it in. So I decided to go ahead and make a new decal in white vinyl to give it the same look that I was going for and I just flipped it over and added the decal to the back. 
it's time to put the sign together. So I'm going to hot glue down the J and the Y and I'm going to put that little sign in between and the little O on top. And this is how the project turned out. I love the simplisticness of it all. I took five painter sticks and I cut them off where it starts to curve and then I used the extra pieces to give them the little gap to measure the gap. And then I took two extra sticks and I'm going to be making it like a kind of like a palette sign. And I'm going to use the Elmer's wood glue max to glue those down. Captain keeps trying to help. I keep pushing him away. And so I am measuring just so they're kind of the same distance apart. And I'm using that Waverly wax in the color antique again, again with the gloves because I just had the manicure. Don't want to mess up that manicure and just giving it a good coat on both sides. Now I painted the J, O, and Y off camera and I'm adding that to the front and I've already glued on the wreath thing that I made, but now I'm going to go in. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys all this. I didn't have my camera on for some reason. Now I'm going in with that distressing ink and just kind of giving it an aged look all around the edges of the sign. And this is how it turned out. Y'all know I love book stacks. If you watch my channel. I make a book stack like a lot. I just love book stacks. I think they're super cute. And I'm taking this crate that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. Once it's dry, I'm applying a decal that I used with my Cricut. And again, no Cricut, no worries. <laughs> you could just hand letter. It would turn out super cute, I promise. Or you could use stickers. But the decal says sleigh bells ring. And then a simple embellishment of some red and white ribbon tied in a knot on top. And that's it. Super. Now you could embellish it with also like, you know, like some bells or something, but I just like the simplicity of it. And I think it would look really cute on a tear tray. Next DIY, I am only going to count the cost of one of these, <laughs> but um, okay. So I had these candle holders and I took off the the little stickers on the bottom because you know I don't like the stickers on my stuff and I had these two little containers glass containers from Dollar Tree all this is from Dollar Tree and so the candle holders were already black oh I'm using rubbing alcohol to kind of take off that goo I didn't have any goo be gone or I couldn't find mine anyway so I'm just using rubbing alcohol to take off the little gummy residue left from the stickers because that's just silly and I was gonna I ended up actually putting something over it, so I didn't really have to do this part, but you know, I don't like the stickers. Anyways, the lids to those containers, I did spray paint black. Then I'm going to use some E6000, and I think I've told y'all this before, but my E6000, this particular one is black. I didn't know it came in different colors, but it does. And so I have the, one of those little turnkeys to kind of, you know, push the, the glue out. But you have to be careful because it'll start oozing out even like when you're like stopped doing it. So you have to kind of like un undo the key thing so that it doesn't just keep oozing. Anyway, I glued that little top to the candle holder. And now I had tried to hot glue this ribbon on and it literally just pulled right off. So that didn't work. So I'm going to put E6000 to adhere it to the little lid there. And then I had these lids from another project from another container that I had. And I thought those would look super cute on the top. It would make it look more like a Christmas lantern. So then I thought, well, gosh, now I'm going to have to like spray paint the top. Cause I just think, I just thought the top needed to be spray painted. So <laughs> I took some masking tape and this was a weird masking tape. It really wasn't that sticky. Like it just came off so super easy, but I just pressed it down, pressed it down. And I taped off that top little area. Then I took some newspaper and I covered up the rest of it because I didn't want any of it to get spray painted black except for the very, very top, which is what I've got right there. Oh, I'm going to show you both. Okay. So well, this side did both <laughs> and then I spray painted it and see how it turned out The the whole top I used E6000 to attach that little top part to the glass part and it worked out really perfectly. Then I did a simple bow. I was trying to do like one of those awareness ribbons and kind of pinch it in the middle. And then I used some jute twine to keep it together. And then I used another little strip of ribbon to go around the middle. So you wouldn't really see the jute twine. Although I guess it didn't really matter if you see the jute twine, but I just did that. 
then you just screw the container on because it's upside down essentially you just screw it on it looks like a little lantern it turns out really really super cute and one thing you can do is put lights in it i only had the icicle lights i could not find my little fairy lights which would have looked way cuter so icicle lights it is but i could just see this like on a porch or like you know, just on your mantle with all the lights out and just have those little lights there. I think it would look really pretty. Okay. Oh, the cost. So the glass container was $1.25. The base candle holder thing was $1.25. And that little lid at the top, that was $1.25 because it came from another thing. So you're looking at $3.75 plus the extras. Let's call it five bucks. Surprise, surprise. I'm making a book stack. <laughs> so I got this from the Dollar Tree. It's $1.25 and I'm painting the top portion including the top, Christmas red. And I think it's Anita's craft paint. In the bottom section, I painted a really pretty green color that I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it's one of my favorite greens. And then I've painted the middle section with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramet paint in the color lemon. It's one of my favorite paints, y'all. So I'm taking all the tape off and I made a decal using my Cricut it's going to say Holly Jolly Christmas and I'm just applying it to the book stack and I did the red and the green in used I used white vinyl for that and black vinyl for the white section so it would show up and I'm making a finger bow if you want a more extended slower tutorial just let me know and I can do that for you now oh I wanted to point out these pine cones are from Hobby Lobby they're three ninety nine. dollars and here's a little tip for you if you looked in the fall section, they had a, a similar size, maybe slightly larger one for $4.99, I think. And it was 40% off. Or maybe it was $3.99, 40% off. But in the Christmas section, it's 50% off. I mean, slightly, slightly smaller back. But, I mean, come on, it's a deal. So always check the prices when you're at Hobby Lobby. All right, so I'm putting on some ribbon, just kind of putting it around one end. I'm adding some greenery that I did get from a Christmas pick and added that finger bowl. And this is all, this is how it turned out. Super cute. Now the book stack itself, the crate was $1.25. The ribbon, the, the Christmas pick, it was part of a larger pick. So, I mean, even if you said I spent, you know, $3.25, $3.75 on the rest, still under five bucks y'all and easy to make. I found this witch's hat in the Halloween area of Dollar Tree and it was $1.25. And I had seen somebody else do this, so I thought I'd try my hand at it. I am trying to use snippers, which did not work. I tried to use snippers to kind of take off the bottom, this little loopy portion, you know. When I did that, I broke it off. I was not trying to break it all off, but that's okay. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So then I'm trying to yank this other side off to trying to break it. I finally get it off, but my snippers would not cut through this and I just don't know if I had the wrong snippers or what but went to my garage and I used a little saw don't know what kind of saw it was but I used that and cut off the bottom then I took this mop head from the Dollar Tree and I was taking off each strand and then just tying it on as you can see me doing here it did take a little bit of time for me to tie it on to be honest but you know it is what it is and I used almost the entire pack I think I only had like maybe eight or so strands left. I probably could have put those on too, but I didn't. And then I have some material that was left over from another project. So this is going to be kind of hard to price out, <laughs> but I was cutting just a square to use for the top portion of this thing that I'm making. Can you guess what I'm making? I don't know. I think it's kind of obvious, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of figuring out how I'm going to place everything. I'm trying to wrap it up and not be too bulky because I should have cut out the material kind of in a triangle shape to fit around the wreath form better, but I didn't. It is what it is, you know, you do you, I did me, and this just how it's turning out. So I had a little bit of a tail kind of floppy end at the top, but it's okay because it's gonna work out in the end. Gave a little trim to that beard there because I'm making a gnome. And I had these wood round, I think they're like doll heads or something. Anyway, I thought they were much, much smaller when I got them. They're huge. So I just kept them in case I could use them for something else. Oh, I'm making a pom-pom. And I have a tutorial on how to do that. Super easy, super fast, super fun. And now I'm just like tying it all off. And then I'm going to trim it. 
and then see I'm attaching it to the top to kind of cover up where you know we had the extra floppy part <laughs> so this is how it turned out I think it turned out super cute now the wreath form cost me a dollar twenty five the mop head cost me a dollar twenty five that Christmas pick that I embellished it with that was only a dollar and the nose I mean I don't know how much you want to say that was like maybe a quarter I don't know so we're looking at like four dollars right now and the fabric was not not even a dollar and the yarn I mean it's just a little bit of yarn so I'm saying five bucks for this one as well see all under five dollars now some of this is footage from years past and so that's why that one says DIY number one it's not number one I have 20 today and I think I think we're about halfway through but anyways I am just painting this with Waverly chalk paint and I believe it's in the color Adirondack. I think it's the word I couldn't say. Anyways, it's another book stack and it's a crate from Dollar Tree. Dollar 25 tree. And I'm taking some material. I believe I got this from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just cutting out a strip because instead of painting, I'm going to use my hot glue gun and apply a the strip of material all the way around. And then I used my Cricut again and I cut out the words Feliz Navidad and it's a double-sided sign. And on the back, it's going to say Merry Christmas. Now, what I should have done was made sure that the Feliz Navidad was on this side and that the Merry Christmas was on the same side. Like this is on the right side. And when I flip it over, I should have made sure Merry Christmas was on the left side. I didn't. But anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm taking some beads that I got from Amazon and I am using a skewer to paint them with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and see where I'm tying around my jute twine. Yeah. The Merry Christmas, the jute twine's covering it up. And if I thought about it, I would have put the Merry Christmas on the other side, but no worries because I didn't hot glue the twine down. I can just move the twine and it'll look great. I added those beads for embellishment, like I said, and a little knot and bow on top. And this is how it turned out. Super, super cute. I really, really like it. I'm using my miter box saw that I got from probably <laughs> Lowe's or something like that. And I'm cutting down some paint stir sticks. Why am I showing so much footage of this? I do not know. After I cut those paint stir sticks down, I'm using some Elmer's glue <laughs> wood glue and i'm going to be gluing on some little wood pieces to hold it together i've since moved on from elmer's wood glue because it never comes out easy and that that lid on it the spout it's just crazy hard to get the glue out <laughs> but i'm painting it again with waverly chalk paint and the color crimson and i've got captain you know, his tail doesn't really ever get into my craft paint. But anyway, now that it's painted, I am putting on, I don't know if you can tell what we're making, but putting on a black little line there with a paint pen. I made a decal using my Cricut. And again, no Cricut, no worries. <laughs> Just hand litter it on. I promise you, it's going to look great. Or you can use stickers. Because vinyl, like I'm using it right here, it's basically a sticker. So yeah, if you see stickers at Dollar Tree, use those. I'm using that paper transfer tape so I don't pull up any of the paint. And as you can see, I am reusing the paper transfer tape. I use the heck out of it. And I'm taking some wood glue and I am just gluing a little base down so that this little ho 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 sign will stand up. And I'm gluing it to both sides so it stands up. And of course, I'm painting that Jenga block, that tower tumbling block, the same crimson color so that it blends in and matches the sign. And now I'm just kind of penciling on where I want to draw the holly and I'm adding a little holly leaf to the top. And that's how it turned out. Super cute, super easy, and I just love it. And it's going to look great on a tear tray. I got this sign a long, long time ago from Dollar Tree. This is a, this is footage from an, another video, 
Um, I think last year's, maybe the year before. Anyway, I took off that little heart and I'm just trying to scrape up any of the glue and all that kind of stuff off of there so that I can use the front of the sign. And I had this other sign. This is from Hobby Lobby and I, I got that one 90% off. So it was super inexpensive. And of course I'm taking off that sticker. I just, I don't like to leave the stickers on. I just don't. If you do, do you boo. And I'm removing the wire little hanger thing. Although it was cute like it was, and it was a super cute sign. I'm gonna paint this with um, Waverly chalk paint in the color either white Ad or Adirondack. But I don't like saying that word because I feel like I don't say it right. <laughs> Anyway, let's give it a good coat. And then I go over it because it was black previously. That's why I did the white kind of like a primer coat. And then I took that way really chalk paint in the color crimson and painted it again. And I'm using that skewer method of painting the beads. I just like to put that on there because um, I wasn't spray painting them. And you could stick them down on a like a piece of tape or something but I just find it easy to stick them on a skewer and paint them kind of be able to twist them around and getting all the crooks and crooks and crannies <laughs> nooks and crannies and then I'm stringing them on so that they're kind of like on that jute twine there and then I am applying a decal and the decal says be merry now if you don't have a Cricut, no Cricut, no worries, remember? I say that <laughs> But you could also like trace it on and, or hand, you know, and hand letter it or like freehand hand letter it or trace it on and fill it in, color it in or use stickers. There's lots of different options. I, I just, I love it when people create and I don't think you should let not having a Cricut stop you from creating. And this was actually screwed in. <laughs> so I am applying the little screws back into the sign. Now, of course, I added a different sign, but this is how it turned out. See, I love the little beads at the top on the hanger part. And it's just simple, classic, and it'll go on a tear tray and look beautiful. All right, this next DIY is taking another piece of scrap wood, but this is actually not fencing material. So something a little bit different. <laughs> And I'm just painting with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. It's pretty much the red I use for Christmas. Then I'm going to tape down the sides and taking some white chalk paint and I'm painting in the center. Why I didn't tape it off just to begin with, I don't know. So then I take off the line. Um, <laughs> The, that painter's tape and now I'm just kind of marking where I'm going to be putting the little dots. Now these daubers I got from Hobby Lobby I believe and Captain's assisting <laughs> today but I am using some just black paint and I'm painting on the belt. This is another Santa DIY and oh look at me using a piece of painter's tape to make it kind of like a crisper line. I reuse the painter's tape as well. And I'm using a yellow because when I use the gold, it doesn't show up as well. So I'm using yellow to make the belt buckle. That's how it turned out. Super simple. And this, again, all these will look so awesome on a tear tray and they're easy to make. I am cutting out. You know what? I think Marvin was cutting this out. <laughs> this is just another scrap piece of wood or maybe it's just some what I had on hand and I'm cutting out the shape and it's going to be a Santa hat. And I'm sure Marvin was doing this because he's a lot more patient with cutting out and being precise. So now I'm going to kind of trace on or sketch out, I guess would be a better word, <laughs> sketch out where the band of the hat's going to be, where the, the little poofy pom-pom ball is going to be and just kind of, you know, like I said, sketching it on. I'm taking Waverly chalk paint in the color. Say it with me, folks. Crimson. And I'm painting the hat with that color. And I'm painting the bottom, and I'll paint the pom-pom ball with the white color. And once it dry, I am taking, I think it's Parisian gray, and kind of adding in some shading, kind of blending the colors, and then adding more gray in. 
just to kind of give it some more dimension and some more interest so it's just not red and white and that's it, you know. <laughs> Trying to make it look a little bit more interesting, I guess. And then I'm showing where the kind of the hat creases down. Trying to blend that in again. I'm not the best painter, but I try. And one thing to remember is if you don't have like power tools or anything like that to cut out something like this, you can make this out of cardboard. And you could just, you know, glue several layers together to make it a little bit thicker, but it's easy to do with cardboard as well. And you'll achieve nearly the same look. I'm taking a tray that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm removing the sticker. Yeah, I just don't like the sticker on there. I just think it doesn't look finished, but I'm actually going to use that side, the bottom of the tray, I guess, if you will. And I'm painting it with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color, I think it's Parisian Gray. And I am taping off the sides, but I think it doesn't matter because I think I go back and paint the sides as well. And I'm really not sure why I taped that off. Oh, so that when I, when I painted the darker elephant color, like I can't even remember why I painted, I did that. Anyway, when I painted the darker elephant color, I didn't want it to mess up the Parisian gray. I did cut this out, decal out with my Cricut and I'm placing it on. This one, I had different font sizes, so it's a little harder to do the hand lettering, but you still could. And then I just put some twine at the top and I had that little wreath as an embellishment. And it's just the lyrics, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I think it turned out really cute. Here I am, hey, see, look at my, look at my project. Okay, this one is a little chalkboard on a stand. And again, coming at you with the Waverly chalk paint and the color crimson. And I'm painting all the way around. I'm trying to be careful because I didn't tape this off. Then I made a decal with my Cricut. It says joy. Got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. All right. That's not the, the song we're singing today. You could make this so easy, hand lettering. And then you could use those wood snowflakes from Dollar Tree, like that one there. And that's what you could use instead of doing a Cricut snowflake. But I'm painting those white because I'm going to use those as embellishment. And I'm stringing them on with some black and white baker's twine that I got from Dollar Tree. Making a little bow. The bow didn't turn out quite like I was envisioning, but it is what it is. Anyway, so I'm going to hot glue that in the corner with those two little snowflakes. And I think it turns out cute. And I think it would look really great on a tear tray. This glass house picture frame is from Dollar Tree. Oh, hello, Captain. I mean, just lay there right in the middle of everything. But I got that scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I just cut it out to the size of the picture frame and I put it in there. And then I cut out a decal with my Cricut. And I didn't have to use my paper transfer tape, but that's literally the only type of transfer tape that I have. And I cut out a Cricut and it spells home. But instead of an O, it's going to be a Christmas tree. You know how people do that. <laughs> I do that anyway. So I'm going to attach that to the glass. So this is actually something that you could reuse for something else if you got tired of how it looks like right now. You could just take off that vinyl. And I'm just wrapping some Baker's Twine again around there. I didn't hot glue this on, or at least I don't think I did, because I wanted it to be something I could change out if I wanted to. This is how it turned out. I didn't add any additional embellishments, and I could have taken that twine. I don't know if I like the twine on it, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I thought that the Santa Mitten that went from White Sparrow Living Luke 12 6 created was genius. All you need is a red oven mitt, a dust mop head, and a Christmas pick from Dollar Tree. And that is literally it. You just take some hot glue and wrap the dust mop head around the top of the oven mitt and glue it down. Then add your embellishments to the corner and you are done. I thought this might be fun as like a pear and you could put it in the center of a wreath or something like that. Lots of decor options, but for only three bucks to make each one, it's fast, easy, and definitely affordable. This is how the Santa Mitten turned out, and it is super cute. And gosh, y'all, I mean, it took me less than five minutes to make it, and it's so cute. So thank you to Wendy from White Sparrow Living, Luke 12 6, for the inspiration. I'll have a link to her video in the description box below. 
this is a whiskey and wit inspired project and what I mean by inspired is I'm nearly copying exactly what she did but I did tweak just a couple of things I'm just going to trace out the mitten pattern and cut out 10 mittens and as you can see I'm just using part of a cardboard box so like I said it's a very inexpensive project now I'm going to have a link to the mitten template in the description box below I don't know if you know this, but we have a different supervisor on duty today. Socks is making a rare appearance and he's giving my handiwork a close inspection. Then I go ahead and punch two holes on the top of each of the mittens. This is how it's going to be hang, hung up later on the garland. The holes do not have to be perfect or anything like that. I did mark where I was going to put them, but you really don't need to. I used some white apple barrel paint to paint the tops of each of the mittens, the cuffs of the mittens. And one thing that I did was paint five on one side and the other five I painted on the other side, meaning the thumb is pointing to the right for five of the mittens and to the left for the other five mittens. I did not paint the back, although I suppose you could, but no one's really going to see that part. And once that was done, I took a paint pen and started drawing on snowflakes in the center of the mitten. I drew an X and then I drew a line down the center vertically and then one across the center horizontally. I then went back and drew a V on the end of each of the lines. I'll show you a close up of the garland at the end and you'll see what I mean, but I could have used my Cricut or maybe even a stencil, but hand drawing it on worked just fine. I used the end of a paintbrush dipped in white paint to make little dots of snow. And this is how it looks so far. I'm making some pom-poms to go with this garland and I just took some white yarn and I wrapped it around my fingers about 30 times. Then I'm going to take another piece of string or yarn and tie it in the middle. And then I'm going to cut all the loops and then I'm just going to give it a bit of a trim to kind of even out the pom-pom. I'm not trying to make it like real, just, I'm just trying to make it look neater, if you will. And now I'm trying to decide the pattern for the garland. I started off with 10 mittens, but I actually ended up just using five. The pearl looking beads are from Dollar Tree and they come in two different sizes. So if you're trying to recreate this, just be careful and make sure that you see the sizes so you know what size you're getting. The wood beads were left over from my Mary ornament in my last video. And if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so YouTube can let you know anytime I share something new. Y'all, this turned out so stinking cute. I absolutely adore it. And it's so easy to make. This garland was less than $5. The yarn, you can get that white yarn from Dollar Tree. The mittens were made out of pieces of cardboard. The beads were from Dollar Tree as well. And those were just a dollar for each package. So for less than like, probably even less than $4, you can make this super cute garland. So thank you to Whiskey Thank you to Whiskey. Thank you to Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit for the inspiration. I just love it so much. And I'm going to have a link to her video in the description box below so you can check it out. And thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. These were fast. Well, I don't know if the garland was fast. The garland took me a little bit, but they were very much affordable and easy to make. And if you guys recreate this, please tag me in your pictures or your videos. I would just love to see what you've created. And thanks again to my inspiration folks, Whitney and Wendy. Oh, what the W is, Whitney and Wendy. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching my video. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.
Now I'll show you both candles after I finish DIY number four. For this project, I also have a template linked in the description box below. And I created the template and again, cut it out on chipboard or you can use cardboard or whatever. I just wanted it to be sturdier and easier to use. And then you just take your pattern and whatever color felt you're going to use and trace it and then cut it out. And if you haven't guessed, I am making Buddy the Elf. I got the yellow candle from Dollar Tree and I cut all of my felt pieces out. And now it's just a matter of gluing it all onto the candle. And this is how it turned out. I really love it. I'm thinking now how to go back and make that Santa look more like Buddy with like a hat and you know his beard and stuff. And then also I have plans, a future surprise, but I don't want to ruin it. But I have plans for another candle that goes with Buddy the Elf. Can you guess who it might be? Here's the last DIY for today. And I'm taking some brown craft paper, it's actually not craft paper, inside of a wrapping paper, instead of having out like a tube of, you know, to hold it together, it was like this sturdier brown paper just kind of rolled up. So I'm using that to wrap these wood pieces, scrap wood pieces that I had in my garage, and I'm making like little presents. And I'm just wrapping them with this brown paper and then I'm taking some Baker's twine. It had a silver like string in it. So I just took that out because I didn't want it. And I'm just wrapping the little scrap wood pieces in the brown paper and then I'm tying them up with string because this goes with another DIY that I did this year. And it's a little, it's a sign that says, wait for it, wait for it. I mean, y'all know what's coming. I think y'all know what's coming, but brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. And that's what I share with y'all today. Kicking off my Christmas DIY season. I just wanted to share some of my favorite DIYs that I've done in the past. I appreciate y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I hope you enjoyed the DIYs that I shared today. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!